Hi everyone, we are Group Servers in SWAG and our choice of topic is Rapid Miner Studio for clustering. We will first introduce to you what Rapid Miner is, followed by its applications as well as how Rapid Miner Studio works. Rapid Miner, Stu <laughs> Rapid Miner is a software platform that allows users to conduct data mining processes or basically search through large amounts of data to search for patterns or relationships between different variables. It is usually used in various business contexts as well as in other fields such as research and education. Rapid Miner also supports all steps of the mining process from search, retrieval and analysis to data visualization and validation for the results. The core of Rapid Miner lies in its open source. Its open architecture allows the software to incorporate a variety of languages, thereby expanding the scale at which it can interpret datasets. It also allows the software to improve its analysis by acquiring new technologies. So where can you get the software? RapidMiner uses a client-server model with a server offered as software as a service or on cloud infrastructures. A starter edition of RapidMiner can be downloaded for free at their website. A personal edition is offered for US $999. A professional edition is $2,999. And pricing for the enterprise edition is available from the developer. Rapid Miner is popular because it has an easy drag and drop interface. No coding is required, but users can code if desired, and it supports code languages such as R, Python, and SQL. Rapid Miner also has a large community, and it's easy to get help if one gets stuck. Rapid Miner is often chosen as the most popular data mining software amongst professionals. Rapid Miner supports user insights from predictive analysis and implement in prescriptive analytics. Being an open-source big data analytics platform allows contributions from other users of the community. One such breakthrough was the presentation of Alien, a specialist in natural language processing and text analysis. Instead of focusing on a statistical approach to text analysis, Alien was able to detect the irony and negative tones within a tweet or text. So what are some real-life applications of Rapid Miner? Rapid Miner allows users to churn rate and predict what type of customers are most likely to exit and also calculate customer lifetime value. It analyzes tweets with sentiment analysis to see what users are saying about a certain subject, brand or politician. Rapid Miner has been used across a huge range of industries such as in automotive, banking, insurance, manufacturing and telecommunications. Some of the users for the program include customer segmentation, predictive maintenance, quality assurance, risk modeling, and sentiment analysis. One text mining technology PayPal relies on is Rapid Miner's predictive analytics and text mining software to help analyze historical and real-time customer data and predict what issues might prompt customers to abandon the service. Sustain Hub also applies Rapid Miner for risk analysis in its supply chains. So this is the interface of Rapid Miner. When you start up the program, this is the first screen you'll reach. This is the home screen. This is the landing page that allows you to, to navigate and load different functions of the Rapid Miner program itself. We, there are some basic tutorials. There is an accelerator for those who want to just do data mining quickly with no customization. And this is where you start a new process. This is where you open your previous analyses. The second view, or perspective as it is called, is the design perspective. This is the main frame where you do all your customization of your data. We will go through this more further on. This is the results screen. This is where you can see the results of your data. Here are our raw data. You can also view it in a statistics form, which you can open up and you can close it. You can view it as charts you can decide what kind of shards do you want to use. There are also advanced shards which we won't go into today and you can use annotations. The last view is the accelerator view. This is for those who want to do a specific task and no customization such as direct marketing, churn analysis, predictive maintenance and sentiment analysis. Now we're back in our main interface, the design view. The design view consists of different elements. Uh, 
The main part is our process element where we build our uh, algorithm and data mining process. We build this process by using data which we store in our repositories view. And here we can use external database and also local repositories and cloud repositories. This view is the operator view. This is where we can use different algorithms and processes for our data mining. Uh, here's an example. If we want k-means, we can use k-means search to quickly load the operator into the process view. This view is the parameters view. This parameter view change depending on what operator you're currently using. Now we're using the clustering operator. So in this view, we can change the k value, for example. This view down here is the help view if we would need help uh, during our data mining process. Welcome back. Now we're going to show a quick demo of how to do data mining in RapidMiner. So to start a new process, we click here and we come back to our mainframe window. But before we start with any data mining project, it is important to define the business problem that we want to solve with the data mining. In this case, we have data from a hypothetical manufacturing company. This company is producing 22 different parts for automobiles. And it's an important task for the purchasing team to develop rational and reliable cost models for the product so that the marketing and sales teams can work from data instead of gut feelings. But, however, having 22 products makes it problematic because it, from a cost perspective, it's quite cumbersome to develop 22 different cost models and that would lead to an unnecessarily complex situation for the marketing teams. So what the company can do, instead of creating one cost model for each of the 22 products, it can classify the products into a manageable handful of closely related clusters with products, um, with each cluster having similar attributes and then develop uh, suitable cost models for these clusters instead of everyone. So what we start with, because we have our product attributes saved in a Excel file, so what we do is in a quick way we write read Excel and then we insert our first operator. We click it and then we go to the parameters pane to the right and we select our Excel file. Now the Excel file is loaded and we need to scrub it with the import configuration wizard. We have already selected what files, so we just click next. And here we can select if there is any attributes, rows or columns that we want to deselect, but for this example we are going to use all the data cells. Here we get a quick overview of what kind of data we have in our file. To the left we have the product names of all the products. Here the rest of the table is different types of costs and variables for calculating costs such as fixed costs and revenue for each product. In this next window, RapidMiner is uh, calculating what kind of attributes we are using. Uh, since this first attribute is the name of the product and not something that we're going to calculate, we select ID for this, but we'll leave the rest as attributes because they are going to be calculated. And as we can see here, the RapidMiner Studio has already uh, defined these categories and he does a quite good job at doing so. And all these categories are correct so we leave them as they are. Then we press finish. Our second step is inserting a k-means clustering operator. And here we can select how many clusters we want. In the cluster we chose five because that is a number that is within our uh, economical scale of our marketing and purchasing team to develop cost models based on. So what we need to do now is connect the output to the input of the clustering model. 
these are the same. What we're going to do now is to be able to evaluate our model afterwards and see how well the clustering algorithm performed. We're going to insert a performance operator. In this case we want to know how well uh, the distance performance is in this particular algorithm. And what we do after we've connected them from the read Excel to the clustering operator and through the performance measuring uh, operator, we connect them to the results to the right. And then before we press the run button, which will go through our data mining process, we will just look through the files once more. We have our read Excel file and it's imported and configured. Our clustering algorithm is a k-means algorithm and we're, we wanted to divide the file into five clusters and it's going to do 10 maximum iterative runs and we are averaging within centroid distance so now we're going to press run to run the data mining process and it's finished what we can see here now is that we have five clusters, each containing a different number of items. To get into a more specific view, we entered the folder view. In the folder view, we can see that in the first cluster, we have gathered these files. And if we want to, we could also look at each individual file and see its properties. The next one is the graph, where we can also see um, the files in each cluster. This is a quite small clustering exercise, so this view is not really relevant. If we want to go into more detail and depth, we can use the centroid table to see the centroid distance. And there is also a plot which we will not go into more depth in right now. But as you might have remembered, we also inserted a performance operator. So what we want to do now is check how well did it perform. And here we can see each single one and what average distance they have within each cluster. To get a better overview of what kind of uh, centroid distance or distance between all the nodes and their centroid, we can go into this description view. And this all looks pretty good and what we have now is our clusters. So what does this mean in practice? This means that for the marketing and purchasing team what they need to do now is not make a individual 20 or 22 individual cost models but they can do five cost models based on these clusters and their products within them this is another example of how we can use rapid miner to do some data mining so right now what i have here is a csv file on uh, credit ratings uh, as sorted according to age, education, gender, and their marriage status. So, what we want to do here, as usual, we want to import our CSV file. So we go to our downloads and input our credit.csv. Uh, make sure that it's comma separated. Go ahead and click next. Uh, next again. Uh, we could choose to include uh, the index, so we can exclude it this time. Um, everything else is correct, so we can go ahead, hit next. And we're going to save it as a credit process. So, back to the design window. Now we're going to drag and drop our credit from, our, from the local repository into the process window. Now uh, to do some uh, clustering again we look for the k-means cluster uh, operator and then we drag it and then we drop it inside. So we link the output and then from here we link it to the results. However now if you try to run the process it won't work because it says that it contains non-numerical attributes like gender 
So gender again is a, is a categorical uh, value. So the rapid minor will not recognize uh, the, 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 that value and it will not be able to run successfully. So one way in which we can subvent this is to introduce a different operator called a nominal to numerical operator. So we drag this in and we connect this. So right now, um, our categorical values like gender, marriage status will be labeled 1, 0, etc. So to show you what this means, we can also introduce another operator called write CSV. Now this operator will let you see, the, uh, will save an output file onto your, um, you know, whichever location you choose to save it to and then you can, you can go ahead and view the results. So if you click on write CSV, you choose a location, say I choose downloads, I'll name it um, credit output, save it, make sure it's comma separated and it should be done. So, if we run it, it should run uh, as normal. Now back to the design view. Uh, if we go ahead and look at downloads, there will be a credit output.csv file that's generated after you've run uh, the process. So, uh, go if you go ahead and open it, you will come across the Excel file that now uh, is slightly different from the original file because of the operator, the nominal to numerical operator. So right now you can see that gender for both male and female it has, has now been categorized to 1 and 0. So that's, that's another tool, uh, operating tool that we can use in Rapid Miner. Back to the results table. Uh, again, the centroid table because we chose k equals to two, so we only have two clusters. Uh, if we want to generate more clusters, again, back to the design view. Go ahead, click on clustering. We can amend the k value as follows. So again, if we run it, you will see that there will be five clusters. And again, the design, I mean, the output CSV file would be different. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you learned something today. Bye.